Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game from the Abu Dhabi uh, Blitz Challenge organized by Abu Dhabi Chess Club on Chess.com. It's Daniel Dubo with the white piece against Nihal Sarin, uh, a game from the semi-finals of the event. Uh, first there was a, a qualifier uh, and then uh, if you've uh, won, won the qualifier you went into the knockout uh, uh, phase of the tournament. So really exciting game, uh, chess.com tagged me on Twitter saying that it would make for a nice video and uh, well, after seeing the game I, I do have to agree. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Dubov opens with e4, uh, we have c6, uh, uh, Sarin goes for the Karo Khan defense, we have d4, d5. Uh, and now e5 going for the advanced variation, uh, which can be tricky uh, for black. So instead of uh, go going for some normal stuff with bishop to f5, uh, we have c6, uh, which is uh, very popular by black, avoiding this uh, uh, tricky area. And uh, if white goes c3, then after e6, for example, we just uh, transpose into the fringe where black is down a tempo. Uh, but instead of e6, black could go for some knight to c6 action and probably uh, get get a position where white might be uncomfortable in or maybe not really familiar with. So instead, just the d captures on c5, uh, gr grabbing that pawn, abandoning the center. We have e6 by Sarina now opening up... Uh, uh, the bishop's diagonal to recapture on c5 and knight to f3. Uh, Dubov just continues development. Uh, we have bishop captures on c5 and now bishop to d3. Uh, knight to c6 and we have uh, castles here. Knight to g to e7. Uh, the knight will now come to uh, g6 probably to put more pressure on the e5 pawn. And knight b to d2. Uh, we have knight to g6 now putting more pressure on the pawn here and knight to b3. Uh, before defending the pawn. Uh, first attacking the bishop on c5, bishop b6 and rook to e1, now the e5 pawn is nicely defended. We have castles by Sarin, uh, and now there are some games where c3 uh, and also bishop to e3 were played, but here we have queen to e2, uh, adding even more protection to the pawn, uh, kind of overprotecting it, uh, Nimzovic would be proud, uh, and it is as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So here uh, we have f6 by black, challenging that white's uh, uh, central pawn, which is basically a, a bone in black's throat. Uh, and it is one of the uh, one of the positions where it's okay to play f6, uh, uh, usually when, when you play the French or, or the Karl Khan, you, you will challenge the advanced e5 pawn with f6. So e captures on f6, we have queen captures on f6, and now uh, you don't want to allow black to start pushing, for example, the e-pawn, uh, so bishop to g5, uh, attacking the queen, allowing queen captures on b2, which Sarin uh, gladly does, he accepts uh, the pawn, rook a b1, and, and now queen to c3. Uh, bishop back to d2, we have queen back to f6, and here Dubo repeats, uh, bishop back to g5. Uh, probably checking if, if Sarin is interested in repeating uh, e e even more, uh, and here he just goes back, queen to f7. He, go f he could go for a counter with knight to f4, which would attack white queen, but he prefers uh, queen to f7. Uh, and now, uh, what's, uh, what's the... Uh, the compensation behind uh, behind Dubov's uh, sacrifice. Well, he does have the semi-open file for the rook, which for the moment isn't all that much. Uh, but okay, he goes for c4, challenges black's strong center. Uh, of course, not, not captures. First h6, attacking the bishop. Bishop back to e3 now, uh, challenging black's bishop. And now knight to f4, saying that, okay, if you don't want to allow my knight to have this beautiful outpost, you have to give up your bishop pair. Uh, which is what Dubov does. So bishop captures, we have queen captures on f4, and now rook b to d1, abandons the semi-open b file, uh, and bishop to d7. Uh, just continuing development, connecting rooks, the other rook can now also enter the game. And now, as there are some holes here uh, on the light squares, bishop to b1, a usual plan, you want to shift your queen over to d3 or c2, and create some threats along the h7 square. So rook to f6, preparing g6, uh, so, so the rook will be defending the pawn to uh, cut off this diagonal. We have queen to c2, now hoping to infiltrate with queen to h7 check, but the g6 now. And uh, okay, it defends, but for the moment this rook is stuck here guarding the pawn. Uh, c captures on d5, we have e captures on d5, and now rook captures on d5, grabbing that pawn. Uh, which could be tricky as it allows knight to b4 with a fork uh, on the queen and the rook, uh, but queen to d1. And here uh, Sarin has to decide whether he wants to grab the rook or not. 
uh, it's uh, it's okay to capture the rook. If you capture the rook, then uh, queen captures with check, comes with a double attack on the bishop, and you co could go bishop to e6, but then just rook captures it, so you would have to block with rook to f7, and it looks a bit fishy, uh, but uh, in the end, after something like rook to f8, and you shift the bishop over here, you will have two beautiful bishops uh, um, slicing over to the to the king's uh, uh, king's castle. Should be good for black, uh, but. Uh, uh, Sarin is not interested in any greedy decision, so first he just goes bishop to c6. He first puts his bishops uh, in optimal squares, uh, and now you should uh, probably go for something like rook to d2, uh, bring the rook back, and then play this uh, end game captures, captures, and then we would just have a lot of captures here, uh, where uh, white's pawn structure is a bit uh, is a bit uh, ruined, but all in all, shouldn't be all that much better for black. However, Dubov decided to go for queen, uh, rook to e4 first, and we reach uh, the position that uh, basically starts starts our game. Uh, so now uh, you don't really want to move the queen. Uh, what you want to do is uh, give up the queen, and this is exactly what Nihal did. Uh, he decided for knight captures on d5, just a queen for two rooks, uh, and he will be left with these two beautiful bishops, and when the other rook comes into the game, should be a very nice attack. We have rook captures on f4, knight captures on f4, and now knight b to d4, hoping to eliminate at least one of the bishops, but now rook to d8, uh, uh, attacking the, the knight here now twice. Uh, we have queen to b3, check, unpinning, uh, and bishop to d5 now, uh, just uh, challenging the queen. Queen a4, uh, and now comes uh, king to g7, uh, just... Um, uh, get, getting the king to a, a little bit of a safer square. However, uh, rook to c8 here was extremely deadly, threatening rook to c1 check, and after the bishop blocks it, now you can go rook to c4, add another attacker here to the to the knight, and it would just win material for black. So it was in the position, uh, but okay, king to g7, uh, and now comes h4. Uh, just uh, creating some breeding room for the king, also hoping to challenge uh, Bl black's defenses here. But now knight captures on g2 uh, by Sarin. Uh, very exciting stuff because if king captures, then you can just capture on d4. Bishop captures here, and the queen is, not, is unable to capture because if bishop captures, then again, you also lose the queen. So queen to b4, now uh, with ideas of maybe trying to infiltrate the position with queen to e7. So rook to d7 defending it. Uh, and now comes knight to e5, going after that rook on d7. Uh, so rook to c7, and now comes bishop captures on g6. And again, we have this, uh, well, one of the critical moments in the game uh, where you have to decide what to do here. Problem is, if you play rook captures on g6, try and give up the rook for two pieces, first you get knight f5 check. And only after king f6, knight captures here, king captures here, and now knight to e7 check uh, with the idea of winning the bishop. So you either move the king and allow this capture here, or you capture here, and you get this position. Knight f4, it's queen against, th against the three pieces. All in all, if anyone's better, kind of should be black, but with the king uh, so, so wide open on, on the board, it uh, would be hard for, for black to create some, some counter chances. Uh, so what uh, Nihal did instead here is knight to f4. He just decided to attack the bishop here, which isn't the, the correct way to go. The correct way to go is knight to h4. With this, the same idea, the only difference is the knight also covers the f5 square, and that's really important here. However, we have knight to f4, now with a double attack on the bishop, but now comes knight to f5 with check. And now, if you just move the king, then queen captures on f4, and the white is just better. So here, Sarin has to give up the rook, uh, we have bishop captures on f5, and now rook to c1 check. And now the king hunt begins. Uh, king h2, we have rook to h1 with check. King g3, we have knight to e2 with check. The bishop covers f3, knight f4, so the king has to go up the board. All of these squares are not available to the white king. So king g4, only move. Uh, and now comes rook to g1 with check. Sarin continues checking the, uh, the king, even though bishop to d8 was uh, a bit more precise here. You just want to capture that uh, pawn on h4, and then it would be extremely hard uh, for, for white to get out of this. It is possible to defend, but um, it's hard to say if in uh, s such a quick game you would be able to find it. Uh, the only option is knight to g6, blocking this, and now you go rook to g1, check king h3, and now it's basically a draw by repetition. Check, 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 check. If you go to h5, bishop f3 just wins for black. 
So, uh, like I said, bishop d8 was a little bit better, but okay, rook g1 check. We have king to h5, and now uh, you kind of need to get this knight to f4. If the knight lands on f4 with check, that's mate. The rook cuts off the entire uh, g file uh, away from the white king. So, you want to get knight to f4 in, uh, but uh, how do you do it? Bishop to c5 by Serene. Uh, trying to get, uh, of course, captures and knight to f4 with mate, uh, but uh, uh, Dubov uh, doesn't, of course, uh, oblige. Uh, he goes back, queen to, queen to a4. Queen to d2 was a little bit better, uh, but uh, for the following reasons. Uh, here, Dubov played queen to a4, but now, of course, you are welcome to pause the video and uh, win the game uh, for, for Sarin while I give you a couple of seconds. So as the plan on the previous move was to kick the queen away from the fourth rank, uh, that's why bishop to c5 was played. So here, uh, congratulations to everyone who found b5. It's another move that kicks the queen away from the fourth rank. And here you can see that all of the squares are taken away from the white queen. Uh, the knight covers f4. Uh, so basically, if you don't want to uh, suffer mate or lose the queen for nothing, you have to play something like this and then captures, captures, and just bishop captures on a2, for example. Uh, leave you with a winning endgame where black is just up a piece. Uh, but instead of this b5 move, uh, Sarin played king to f6 with a double attack on the bishop and uh, uh, knight, which is weird because uh, Sarin played bishop to c5 with uh, with the sole purpose of uh, kicking the queen away from the fourth rank to be able to deliver knight to f4 checkmate, and then he misses b5, which is, which is really weird. As it, it's the same idea, you just try to kick the queen away from, from that. And there, there are no, there are no tricks here. After pawn to b5, there's no queen here. Check. There's no queen here. Check. Bishop covers that. So it is really weird that he missed that. But okay, king f6. Uh, he uh, probably thought that this was just as winning. Uh, and now comes uh, knight to d7 with check. Uh, here, white makes a suboptimal move, but it's okay. Uh, it's it's a blitz game. Uh, even though I think it's a blitz game, I'm not. I'm not uh, really sure, but I think it is. <laughs> Knight to d7 with check, uh, and now comes king captures on f5, uh, which again is not the the most precise way, but uh, I, I do imagine it's a blitz game, so we're not going to overanalyze it. However, a king to g7 is just uh, is just much better. Again, uh, you will not be able to capture here because now queen f uh, bishop f7 check bishop blocks and bishop captures here is mate. Any check uh, to the white king is mate because the rook uh, is cutting the king off from escaping to the g file. Uh, but uh, Sarim played king captures on f5 and now, uh, well, now he's uh, in, in a lot of trouble because of queen to c2 check. Uh, and he will not be able to deliver any checks. This will not be happening. This will not be happening uh, because, well, after king f4 we have queen d2 check, king f3 and now queen captures the bishop with check. King captures on f2 and now queen captures on c5 with check and now knight to f4. Uh, will not be all that all, all that impressive because uh, well king can just capture here so king f1 uh, and now comes king captures on h6 and the white king escapes from any mating ideas we have knight to f4 but now just queen to f5 dubov pins the knight we have uh, rook to g6 with check uh, but now Dubov is not even interested in escaping with the king he just gives up the queen and says okay this is now a winning endgame uh uh, Sarin captured and we have king captures on g6 and it was in this position that uh, Nihal Sarin resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, but what what a game it was uh, so many chances and I, 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 I simply don't believe that he missed b5 as it's it's not something that you have to see uh, especially since on the previous move he played uh, the exact same idea uh, sorry, uh, I'm, uh, I'm unable to reach the position uh, very, very quickly. Uh, but uh, yeah, here. Just, he played bishop to c5 with the exact idea of getting the queen away from the defense of the fourth rank. And then after this, he doesn't play b5. Extremely weird. I don't know what happened here. Uh, but, you know, it's chess. Anything can happen and uh, everything will happen. Uh, and such is the case here. Another ruined immortal, but uh, definitely an, an exciting game. And I'm very happy that I was able to show it. 
So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dimitri Offengenden, Alexander Voldek, uh, Jonathan Cook, Robert Vasquez, and Christopher Drake for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, the Lila Chess Zero vs. Stockfish Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else, whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, we are starting our uh, Lee Chess Fridays uh, tomorrow, so hope you are uh, ready for that. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon uh, uh, with everything I already mentioned. So, uh, see you soon, uh, and have an excellent rest of your day.